Hello and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com. It's January. Happy New Year, everybody. It is January 2022, and I feel like I need some kind of pachow, pachow, some kind of streamers to set off, but it's January 2022. Welcome to 2022. And while I'm welcoming you, let me get caught up here to you all. So I hope everyone had a very safe holiday. Um, I hope you had a great time with family and friends. Um, you have survived. You've survived the next holiday. Um, we are going to be keeping this a teeny tiny bit shorter tonight. I'll go ahead and warn you. We had, um, I don't know, we had record-breaking, hello Jennifer, we had record-breaking temperatures yesterday, like the high. The high, we were, rec we were record-breaking yesterday. Then we had, and hello Hattie, then we had like three tornado warnings, and hello Mindy. Tonight, we have a winter weather advisory. So at some point after I leave the chat tonight, we could get from two to four to seven to 12, who knows, um, inches of snow tonight. And hello, Betty Ann. Let's see. I've got my phone in a funny spot. So let me make sure I don't miss anybody. Hello, Betty Ann. Hello, Elaine. Hello, Myra. Happy New Year. So I'm just saying, hello, Catherine. I'm just saying, I'm going to try and keep it short. Hello, Carol Lou. Shorter. Okay. I don't know the meaning of the word short. So I'm going to try and keep it shorter. Happy New Year, Trish. Happy New Year, Catherine. Um, let's see, I see Lisa um, sneaking in here from cold and windy Arkansas. Um, so I'm going to try and keep it a little bit shorter than normal. Hello, Lynn. Just because I don't want to get stuck out here. So I don't really think that we're going to have snow. And yes, I'm getting ready to use an apple to keep my apple phone up. Is that not hilarious? Hello, Fred Center from Demons Ferry. Hello, Jennifer. 2022 is a hard reset for this girl. Hello, Linda from Rock Island, Illinois. And this apple is not helping this apple. Hold on, let me scoot it over here just a little bit. You know, my phone without a case just wants to slide everywhere. Hello, Karen from Nebraska. Oop and Betty Ann says it's 27 degrees and snow today, but it didn't stick too bad. I don't think it's gonna stick. We're just not used to snow. And hello, Deanna, it is good to see you. Monica is sneaking in here. Hello, John from home base. I'm assuming you have Alyssa. I'm assuming she is there with you. Okay, we're just gonna let this thing go. Hello, Alicia, it's good to see you. Happy New Year, everybody. Today is January the 2nd. It is 2022. Hello, Katie. Hello, Alicia again. I'm um, yeah, Katie from Minneapolis. Um, hello, Orlando. Debbie, what's the weather like in Orlando? We all want to know. And I need to know if there's anybody here from Nashville or Cookville. Hello, Myrna. If there is, let me know what's headed this way because I really don't know. But again, hello and happy new year. Hello and happy Sunday. It is 2022. I am Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com. Hello, Rosie. Oh, and Kathy says 30 and snow in North Mississippi, right? MS says Mississippi. I did well. I did well in, you know, geography in school. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so we had record highs yesterday. Then we had tornado warnings last night. And now we have this. And hello, Bernice. Hello, Pat from Illinois. Also, let us know if you are new. And we would love to tell you hi and hello. So we should have some new people since it's January. January, and then I believe it's in August or September, I cannot remember, are the two biggest months for people to join WW. And I think that is, I think that's so funny. I don't think it's funny, but I think it's funny that the second time is like around Labor Day. And I don't know what that's about. And hello, Linda from Illinois. But yeah, but if you're brand new, let us know because we should have some new people. Um, January is always a great time to get, you know, to get cracking at something like this. Oh, and Alicia says it's 19 and snow in Harrison, um, Idaho. Yeah, you don't need to send it. You don't need to send that this way. Um, oh, and Sanders says it's going to be minus three in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. No, thank you. You keep it. Okay, and Mindy says it is September. So yeah, right around Labor Day is the second busiest time for people to, uh, to join WW. Okay, so I'm going to try. I always talk fast. So if you're brand new, I always talk fast. We do want you to say hi and hello because um, we would love to welcome you. And if I don't notice one of the new people, somebody please shout out because I've got my phone almost laying down now. I've got to get either a new case for the phone or get a new phone. But anyway, so I would love to welcome you. We would love to welcome you if you are brand new. If I happen to miss you, I'm going to say hi and hello now. Um, we are going to... Um, Oh, okay, Mindy says that the reason that September is the second busiest time to join WW is because people are ready for routine after a summer off. That makes total sense. Makes total sense. Yep, and Myra just said the same thing, or Myra just said the same thing. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to talk not faster than normal because I don't think that's possible. I don't think it's possible, but, um, and hello, Rita, I don't think it's possible for me to talk any faster. And hello, Mary Ann from Pennsylvania. 
but I'm gonna try and keep it a little shorter. So I'm gonna try and shave about 10 minutes off of tonight. If you are brand new, we usually have 30 minutes of classroom and then I usually change into an apron and we have 30 minutes um, of you know like some fun stuff. I'm gonna try and keep it to 25 and 25 so I can get out of here just a few minutes early tonight in case you just tuned in. We had record-breaking highs in East Tennessee. Hello, Jeannie. We had record-breaking highs in East Tennessee yesterday. I mean, literally broke records. Then we went to on to two or three tornado warnings in Hello Rita, and today we have a winter storm warning. So the winter storm warning is for some time after I leave here from the chat and I still have to drive home. So I'm gonna try and shorten it by about five minutes on each one, and I won't be changing into the apron just to save at that time. Okay, a little bit of news. Um, you know, from January, because it's January now. So I've actually got to change this on my notes because my notes say December. I have no more December news. December is done. This is January. We are in 2022 and Happy New Year, everybody. You did it. You survived all the major holidays. So even the people, even people that participated in Kwanzaa, they were right down to the last minute because Kwanzaa ended, I think, the last day of the year, if I'm not mistaken, this year. So everybody, give yourself a big pat on the back. You did it, you survived all of the major holidays. It is all downhill from here, seriously. I mean, now is a great time to join because you don't have any more major holidays for months, seriously. Okay, so everybody give yourself a pat on the back. You did it, we are here. We are here to January, 2022, and you made it. Um, second thing, to those of you, um, to get you ready. So if you if you took a break and you're ready to jump back on, and hello Betty, yes, happy new year, Betty Ann. If you took a break and you're ready to jump back in, um, or if you're brand new and you just need some kind of a jump start, you know, um, if you're gonna be new, WW is offering, hello Deborah, WW is offering 50% off of a six month membership for, for new people. So it's not for us that have already been members for a while. So it's new, it's for new people, but um, why six months? So, you know, the first thing I thought was, well, six months, yeah, okay, that's kind of a long commitment. But WW is not a quick fix program. It's just not. So what you wait for the holidays did not define you. So I don't I don't really care anymore. You're past it. You've made it past the holidays. So whatever you ate for the holidays absolutely did not define you. Um, just didn't. Six months though, if you will commit for six months, that will help you to create a new lifestyle. It's one that's created for you with the new personal points program and hello Sylvia. It's one that's created just for you with the new personal points program. And Jessica will put in the notes where you can click to go. So if you're brand new, if you've never joined WW before, you know, or if you're back after a while away, you can click on that link and get 50% off. So that's some more good news. Um, that is some more good news um, for the month of January. Um, Knoxville Girls, I just wanted to remind you that on January the 7th, so that is this coming Friday. So last week I had to say, it's not this week, don't get excited. But this coming Friday, so like today's Sunday, this coming Friday, um, and hello Vicki from St. Louis. So last week, last week we could, I, I had to keep saying it was next, you know, next week. But anyway, this coming Friday, um, you have the Knoxville Girls, um, hello Sandy, you have got one of your um, in-person workshops is back. So Linda's workshop that's at the Cedar Springs location, so that's there at Cedar Bluff, and that's the main WW Center. Um, her workshop will be back on Fridays at 9.30. So I'm assuming that her that weigh-in is from 9 until 9.30, um, and that the meeting, the actual workshop is gonna start at 9.30. So Knoxville Girls, that is good news. It is this coming Friday. Um, if you've been missing Linda's workshop, it'll be back this coming Friday morning. And then if you haven't checked your app today, go ahead and go check that. Um, it, it came up, um, I, well, I've checked my app like, I don't know, two or three times today, but it came up right at, um, it take maybe 6.30 Eastern time. I don't know what time to tell you, just go back and check, check your app. But if you haven't checked your app today, they have some new limited time challenges and they're just for a short amount of time, but it's to kick off the new year. Um, there are two of them. One of them is called Rise and Shine, and it earns you a badge on Connect. So on WW, um, you can share it to Connect. Um, you can you can find it down in your badges when you go to check out your profile. Um, but Rise and Shine earns you a badge if you track breakfast every day for one week. So and it really doesn't matter what you had for breakfast. So if you had coffee and you track coffee for breakfast, if that's all you had, then you get you get credit towards your, you know, towards your badge. So every day for one week, um, you can earn the Rise and Shine badge, but again, it's a limited time to join. So you wanna go ahead and check out your app today. And then the other one is the Ready, Set, Sweat. 
and you only have to track activity for three days during that week to earn a badge. So those are two super cool badges that you can earn. Okay, so that is the news that I have for the beginning of January 2022. Other than Happy New Year, everybody. It is so good to see you. I'm so glad that you all are here. Um, this month's theme, so for the entire month of January, we're going to be talking about starting strong. Um, we're going to spend the whole month finding out ways to start strong and then stay strong. So it's great to start strong, but you gotta, but you gotta stay strong. Okay. <clears throat> so New Year doesn't always mean new you. You know, it might mean a, just mean a better you. It doesn't have to mean a, a, a completely new you. Um, but sometimes it means big plans with little follow through. I mean, that's happened. I know. You know, it happens to me. So, you know, I'm, so I know it's happened. Um, it happens to people. But if you'll stick with us this month, we're going to find out ways to stay excited, though, and keep that momentum going. Hello, Sherry, because what you want to do is you want to start strong, but then you need to find out ways to keep that momentum um, moving. Um, okay, so last week, who, during this crazy holiday period, um, oh, and I'm so sorry, somebody just asked, and I just realized I did not show it to you. Yes, Sandra, that is a crocheted strawberry is Casey just not fantastic? She was so nervous about the tornado warning last night that she crocheted me a strawberry. How cute is that? And Linda's already jumping ahead. Just kidding. So who last week during this crazy holiday week, who sat your bottom in a chair? So who went, um, who went to an in-person workshop? Oh, and Sherry's in Southwest Florida right now. Who went to an in-person workshop last week? So give me some thumbs ups. Linda did. Now, what color chair are you all in? Hold on. Let me go back and see here. Oh, a soft gray chair. Ooh, Linda had her bottom in a soft gray chair this week. And yes, Sandra Casey does do great work. But so give me some thumbs ups if you went to a, an in-person workshop this week. We actually had a lot of people there um, this past Tuesday night, which was, you know, surprising because it was the week after Christmas. Um, thumbs ups for in-person workshops or if you attended a Zoom workshop. Um, Oh, yes, and I'm so, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Deanna just said on those two, on the two um, new challenges that I mentioned, you can only do one at a time. So that's why you want to go ahead and go do them so that you can do one, complete it, and as soon as you've completed one, then you can sign up for the other one. So you don't have to wait an entire other week. But thank you for pointing that out, um, Deanna. But yeah, so, or if you did a Zoom workshop, thumbs ups for those. And I attended, so I'm going to do a thumbs up. And hearts, if you were here with us live um, last week or if you watched later on demand, I was here, so I'm going to do a heart. So yeah, so you are fantastic just for being here. I mean, during the craziest time of the year, you all decided to come. So you all are awesome. So Bravo stickers to everyone. I wish I could literally hand you Bravo stickers because you need to know how amazing you are for coming during you know, during this, oh, and Trish was in a gray chair too. That's awesome, y'all. You and Linda could hook up. Um, but how awesome you all are for doing this during the holidays. I mean, it's so easy just to sit back and go, nope, I'll wait until January. Well, guess what? January's here and y'all have already done it. So again, bravo all the way around um, for sitting your bottoms in chairs or attending Zoom workshops or being with, here with us. Um, so last week we were talking about slowing down to speedy eaters or slowing down a speedy eating. And we realized I'm the slow eater. We talked about this and this was proven on Friday night. So Friday was Alan and Alyssa's, or Alan and Alyssa, Alan and Casey's wedding anniversary, Alyssa's fourth birthday, fourth birthday, so she's four now, and um, New Year's Eve. And thank you for whoever said my voice sounded better. And hello, Barbara from the crossroads. I know I'm getting ready for the crazy weather because Barbara's going to get it too. And she'll get it a few minutes before I do. Um, and seriously, if there's anybody here from Nashville, from Nashville, Tennessee, or from Cookville or Crossville, Tennessee, y'all need to let us know if it's coming. Okay. <clears throat> but so Friday night was Casey and Alan's wedding anniversary, or Friday was, Alyssa's fourth birthday, and it was New Year's Eve. That was a lot going on. That was a whole lot going on. Um, and we found out, again, I am the slow eater. So everyone else was done going back for seconds. Some of the boys were going back for thirds. Yes, Happy New Year, Barbara. Some of the boys were going back for thirds, and I was still outside at the um, at the fire working on, my, uh, working on my food. So I'm definitely the slow eater. But we were talking about quick eaters, you know, last week, you know, people that are, you know, you know, rapid fire eating. Um, sometimes they're eating so fast that you're worried that they're going to eat what's on your plate. 
So I need to know what of these techniques did you all try for slowing down your eating? So did anybody switch to their non-dominant hand? So anybody, did I have any right-handers switch to their left hand to try and slow themselves down or any left-handers switch to their right hand? Did anybody try that? Did anybody try sitting next to a person who's the opposite hand? So like when John and I sit next to each other, now we, I mean, we've been doing this long enough. We get along fine, but we have, you know, kind of have to think, okay, let's see. He's left-handed, I'm right-handed to make sure, you know, we don't, we don't elbow each other. Did anybody do that? Or did anybody pass the dishes the opposite direction to see if that got any attention or slowed anybody down a little bit? And I also want to know who tried setting their fork down. So that one, I think it's, you know, it's kind of a big deal, you know, setting, you know, taking a bite, setting your fork down, either taking a sip of water, you know, asking another question, you know, chatting a little bit. Oh, Mary Ann, their fork down in between bites. So how did that work, Mary Ann? Did that slow you down some? So what did you all do? What did you all do to slow your, so I need my speedy eaters to tell me what did you all do last week to slow yourselves down a little bit? And remember, I'm trying to shorten this up just a little bit. Oh, and Carol tried putting her fork down. So how did that work? Deanna's got her hand up. So she tried one of them. And let's see, Betty Ann said she had to slow down for medical reasons, but she used to be a fast eater. Oh, Trish set her gym boss timer for five minutes. So what does that mean? What does that mean? You waited five minutes before? Oh, yep, yeah, Mar uh, Marianne said it worked for her. Hello, MJ, good to see you. And Jeannie did a sip of water in between bites. So I'm assuming that worked for everybody. So did it slow y'all down a little bit? Loretta drank some water in between bites. Sandra did lots of talking. That one's always a good one. And maybe that's the reason I'm the slowest eater. Maybe. And Elaine sat her fork down and she drank more water. Okay, so last week, everybody gets credit for doing their homework last week. So last week, your homework was Holiday Survivor Club. It was hashtag Holiday Survivor Club. Just being here, just being here, you, you survived. So you are part of our Holiday Survivor Club. And if I did not get you your badge last week, just let me know and I will for sure send it to you because it was super cute. It was like a little survivor badge um, and it was the Holiday Survivor Club. But all of you all, all of you, because you're here, because you have survived the holidays. Hello, Julie, because you have survived the holidays. So everyone did their homework last week. Everybody gets their homework badge. So bravo to everyone. Again, if I missed your giving you your, um, your bravo badge for last week, if you missed the holiday survivor badge, just let me know and I will for sure get it to you. Um, but good job, everybody. That was So that was your homework last week and you all all did it. Hello, Evie, because you are here and you have survived the holidays. Okay, this week, we are talking about let's do you in 2022. So I saw Carol Lou said earlier, you do you in 22. Um, somewhere around Fruitcake 30, the day after Christmas, I start hearing new year, new me. Or this year I've heard I'm all new in 2022. I keep seeing that pop up. So I keep seeing that kind of rolling around the internet and I keep hearing it in people's conversations. And it is great. It is great to be excited about, a fr about fresh starts and new beginnings. Um, but the clock ticking over into, oh, and Julie, I'll have to send you one, but the clock ticking over to a new number, is that's just the start. Um, so we're gonna be chatting a lot over the next few weeks about star goals, and we've talked about them in the, in the past. Star goals are goals that are, the S is for specific. It has to be something that's specific, um, not a generality. The T is truly doable. It's something that you can truly do. A is actionable, so you will be doing something and not not doing something. And R is relevant. It needs to be relevant to your journey, especially since we are now on um, the um, personal points program because this is all, it's all about you. So we're going to do you in 2022. So we're even going to chat, chat a little bit in the second half about setting some of those um, for the new year. Um, but first, um, for this for this part, portion of tonight's chat, we're going to look in the rearview mirror just a little bit. Um, now, I had, I used to have a, um, a coach, a mentor, I don't know what to call him, that whenever I would say, I, I need help working on X, Y, Z. I don't seem to ever be able to get X, Y, or Z done, accomplished, whatever. And he would work with me on setting, you know, goals for how I was going to get that done. Um, when I would try to look back and see, okay, well, what happened last time? Why did I not get that done? Or what kept me from getting that done? He would always say, stop looking in the review mirror. Stop, you know, stop checking what happened in the past. You know, you don't need that. Well, I totally disagree. I totally disagree. And that's why we're going to talk about last year for just the last, you know, just a couple of minutes of the first half. Um, and this was a paid, this was a paid guy too. Okay. I wasn't paying him, but he was a paid consultant for our company. And I really, I mean, I understood what he was saying, but I really did not find that beneficial to not look at anything in the past. So we're going to be looking 
in our rearview mirrors just a little bit to see what happened in 2021 and do we want to change it, keep it, you know, what do we want to do with that? So I think it's okay to look back in your rearview mirror if it's if it's going to help you, you know, move on with, with your goals. So if 2021 was even worse than 2020, okay, and I know some people that it, that it was that way, like we did not have any supply chain issues here at Casey Kitchen Center in 2020. It's been it, it's been a nightmare in 2021. The only thing I can say is things are starting to come in. So if 2021 was worse than 2020, if that was your year, if you think, you know, my weight loss stunk or my wellness goals or my goals just all went, you know, in 2021, if it was worse than 2020, what is something that happened in 2021 that you would do differently? So I want you to look in your rearview mirror and think, okay, that such and such happened in 2021 that I want, I want to do that differently in 2022. Um, if you could pluck one moment in time out of 2021, if you could just like think, you know, you know, such and such happened in 2021, would you let that happen again? Is that something, I mean, even if it was something back, I mean, something bad, <clears throat> sorry, I saw Karen said, I need to look back. If, even if it was something bad or if it was something hard, or if it was something that hurt, you know, would you let it happen again? Because sometimes, you know, sometimes things that hurt are better for us, but so I just want you to you know, if that was a, an even worse year for you last year than 2020, I want you to, you know, is there one moment in time you could pluck out and think, would I let that happen again? If, it, you know, if, if that came, if that situation arose? And this is a weird one, but were there any supply chain issues that kept you from reaching the goals that you had? So were there any of your, you know, food products that you couldn't get? You know, was there anything that you couldn't get in, 20, in 2021? Okay, if 2021 was just another year, if you're thinking, I don't know what, what's the big deal. 2021 was just another year. What goals did you set at the beginning of 2021? I mean, are, would you set the same ones again? Was it just such a, yeah, just a normal year that the goals that you set at the beginning, would you set those again for 2022? Um, is there anything in particular that you could credit to 2021? You know, any anything in particular that you could give credit to, um, to letting 2021 just be another year? You know, like, was there something that you did right? Is it something that you did normally? Is it something, you know, that you did, you know, whatever that you could credit that to? Um, and did you make any conscious decisions that helped kept your, that helped to keep your, 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 blah, 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 helped to keep your year normal? So, you know, did you make sure that you could attend a workshop? Did you, um, okay, Trish, I'll get you too. Did you make sure that you attended a workshop? Did you keep, you know, your accountability the same? Is there anything, is there anything that you did, you know, that helped to keep your year normal? But if 2021 was such a good year that you want to repeat it again this year, then we need to know what was one goal that you set at the beginning of last year that just really took off. You know, did you have one that just really took off and you thought, you know what, man, that was fantastic. I want to do that again this year. Um, did your support system change or improve? Um, you know, did your support, see, okay, Myra had a, had a great one. She lost all the weight that she gained in 2020. So that was fantastic. Um, so, you know, did your support system change or improve? Um, and what is one thing that you would tell a new member to make sure that 2022 is everything that they hope that it will be? So that's going to be your homework for this week is let's do you in 2022. So your last year was different than my last year, was different than somebody else's last year. It's okay to look in the rearview mirror. Let's not dwell on it. I mean, let's not just get down in the Oh, it was terrible. I'm never going to survive. I can't get out of this. You know, I'm just, I'm always going to live in 2021. You know, that's not true. Um, but it's okay to look in the rearview mirror and think that could be different or that went well, or that was fantastic. Let's do that again. You know, so what are those things? So your homework for this week is let's do you in 22. So it's, it's a little bit more complicated this week. L E T S D O Y O U I N. Two, two. So let's do you in 22. And with this new personalized program and what we've seen in our rearview mirrors, I sincerely believe that this could be your year. Okay. I really think that 2022 could be your year. Um, so for your homework, I simply want you to list one thing that went well last year that you want to repeat for this year. And I want you to make sure that it went, that it was so, went so well last year that it's something that you would tell a new member. So if we had somebody brand, brand new here tonight, your homework is to say, and thank you, Alicia, for sharing that. So your homework is to say, you know what? Something did, good did happen in 2021. I fell down and I picked myself up. Thank you, Lynn. Fell down and picked myself up. And I'm going to do that again this year. Or, uh, 
uh, got back to my in-person workshops or, you know, whatever it was, but I want it to be something that was so good in 2021 that you want to do it again in 2022 and that you would tell a new member. I'm serious. We're getting ready to have a lot of new people. Okay. So a lot of new people are going to be joining us um, in 2022, especially with the new program. Everybody's kind of over 2020 and 2021. I think everybody's looking, you know, to do you in 2022. Okay. I did manage to end the first half of tonight's chat five minutes early. If you are running a few minutes late, um, um, kept this uh, first half to 20 uh, to 25 minutes. Thank you, Julie, for sharing that to 25 minutes. I'm going to try and keep the second half to 25 minutes and we're not going to cook anything because we have a winter storm warning um, for our area. So I'm trying to get out of here just a few minutes early so that I can safely get home before anything happens. Now, this is East Tennessee. Yesterday, we had record-setting highs. Then we had two tornado warnings. Today, we have a winter weather advisory. I don't know. I could get home, and it could be, it won't be sunny because it's, you know, light because it's late. Thank you, Deanna. Um, but, yeah, we might not have any snow. I will say, though, I'm, I'm getting prepared. I have everything I need at home to make um, vegetable beef stew, soup if we get stuck at home. Um, I have things that do not require any heating. I have things that do require heating just in case. Because, only because, only because this weather system that is headed this way, the last time we saw a weather system like this was in 1993 and we were expected to get, I think three to five inches of snow. We got 22 inches of snow, 22. The ground was so warm, it didn't stay around very long, but it was 22. So anyway, I'm just trying to be prepared, okay? Just, you know, just because that's what happened last time we saw this weather system. And thank you, Vicki, for sharing that. Okay, so that is my winter storm warning. And I'm going to try and get out of here a few minutes early tonight. But for the second half of tonight's chat, we are going to be talking about New Year's resolutions. Yeah, and 22 inches, Betty Ann said, oh, wow, 22 inches for somewhere who we panic if it snows two inches. Okay, so 22 was crippling. And so everybody... Get your drink of water. We are not going to, I'm not going to put the apron on um, because I'm trying to shave off that five minutes. So everybody go ahead and grab your drink of water. And you can see <clears throat> everything is much better. Not planning any coughing fits, but I have all of my things here at the ready. Um, but we're going to talk about three New Year's resolutions that you can do. So if you are brand new to our chats, normally the first half is 30 minutes. Oh, and hello, Pauline from Ireland. It's good to see you, um, and Happy New Year. The first half of our chats are normally 30 minutes of classroom, talking about whatever the WWE topic was for the previous week. And then the second half of the chats is usually something fun, usually cooking. But since we have winter weather approaching quickly, and I need to know, anybody from Nashville? We have no, seriously, we have no one here from Nashville, Cookville, or Crossville. Y'all are killing me. Really, I got no Tennessee girls here. Um, Yes, Lynn, we're going to talk about the detox here in just a second. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to try and wrap it up early tonight just to, you know, just to beat the, you know, the winter weather. Um, but every year, the beginning of every single year, the first week of every year is a big, this is it. This is it. I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm a changed person. This year, I am going to X, Y, Z, fill in the blank until we realize that we made that the resolution that we made was either too big, it was too fast, it was gonna you know gonna have to happen too fast, it was too un unrealistic, or honestly, it had nothing to do with us. So remember, I was talking about star goals earlier, and we are gonna use some star goals in the second half. Um, I'm gonna keep it to three New Year's resolutions, and okay, and Alicia just said I don't make resolutions. These don't have to be New Year's resolutions. I just I think these would be three good things. If you just wanted to set a goal, you know, just some kind of a goal for the new year, um, then um, so have you ever known anybody, have you ever known anybody to make a new year's resolution because somebody said that they should? I have done that before. I have made a new year's resolution because somebody said, you know, you should really, again, fill in the blank. And so I've done it. And I've used that as my new year's resolution. Or... Have you ever set a New Year's resolution because you saw somebody else doing whatever it is? If somebody else was dieting or someone else was stopped smoking or someone else, you know, started reading more books or something like that, you know. So have you ever done, have you ever set, a, you know, done a New Year's resolution because you saw somebody else doing it? And this year, I'm scared to death that people are going to be setting um, New Year's resolutions because they saw it on TikTok or it was a TikTok challenge. That's 
All I don't even have TikTok, but that's all I see is TikTok challenges. So this year, today, we are going to talk about three, three easy, if you want to make them into New Year's resolutions, not easy, but they're, they're manageable. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how these can be, you can use a star goal for each of these. You can set your own. You do not have to use one of these, but just something that you can do that's not because somebody else is doing it, not because somebody said you could do it, and for heaven's sake, not because you saw it on TikTok, Okay. Let's not do that. Let's not go there. You don't need to set any TikTok challenges as your New Year's goal for this year. So this month, again, we are going to be talking a lot about star goals. Um, and I'm going to use that concept to show you, you know, how to make a much more specific, um, truly doable, actionable, and relevant resolution so that you can do you in 2022. So as an example, I heard somebody say, oh, my New Year's resolution is to clean and organize my entire house. Hello, Marlene from, oh, Hammonds. Oh, I'm sorry. Sylvia is saying hi to Marlene. Oh, yes. Hello, Marlene. Um, I thought that said from. Anyway, so we're going to, so I overheard somebody say that their New Year's resolution was, um, I'm going to clean and organize my entire house. That sounds awesome, doesn't it? But that would be a ridiculous resolution for me. And let me tell you why. So if I break that down into star goals, into a star goal, is it specific? Yes, yeah, sort of, but not really. So to me, clean your whole house. What does that mean? Is that the entire, is that the inside? Is that the outside? Is that every room? I mean, what does that, what does that mean, your whole house? I don't, what does that mean, the areas you live in? I don't know. Be specific. Um, is it truly doable for me? No, not really. We have two businesses. We own two small businesses, and I do this in my free time, in my spare time. I mean, we're very active with our grandchildren. Obviously, you already know that. And it just isn't doable. It just isn't doable for me to invest the time um, to get it, to get and keep our house totally clean and organized, okay? Um, is it actionable? Sure, cleaning and organizing are actions. So that one's a yes. Um, actionable, means you, actionable means you will be doing something instead of not doing something. But is it relevant? Not at all for me, okay? It's not relevant at all for me. I'm okay with my cozy chaos, so this resolution isn't even really relevant for me, so why would I set myself up for failure? Okay, instead, here are three suggestions on 2022 resolutions that you should run through the STAR test before you decide. So any New Year's resolution, goal, short-term, long-term, small goal, big goal, whatever, you need to start getting in the habit of running them through this star test. I mean, I'm serious, it works. So I've done this a few times. I obviously do this with my, the goals that I set for WW, but I've done this a few times in work goals and thought, you know, does that pass that star test? Because if it doesn't hit on all cylinders, it's probably not gonna happen and I'm probably not gonna get it finished. I'm probably not gonna achieve that goal. Okay, so here are three New Year's resolution ideas to do you. So let's, you do you in 22, okay? We're just talking about you. We're not talking about me. We're not talking about her. We're not talking about those two over there that are chatting. We're talking about you, okay? So, and I'll try to keep it a little bit shorter so that I can beat this bad weather that's coming in. But here's how, here are three New Year's ideas, uh, New Year's resolution ideas to for you to do you in 2022. So Lynn just asked how my detox went. So I have heard a lot of people say, you know, this year I'm gonna do a detox, okay? So let's be a little bit more specific. Let's, you know, let's go ahead and break it down into a star goal. So I just did a three day detox. A lot of y'all did the detox with me. Um, I was very specific, three days, okay? So I ran it through the star goal test and my number was three days, a three day detox. And, and oh, that's cute. Lynn goes, you do you boo. Um, but that was very specific, three days. I'm gonna say, if you do a detox like we did last week, some of us did last week, you need to keep it to three days, okay? Do not try to do that for any longer, you know, of a period of time. Three days is plenty for a detox. This was not a fast. Um, I did have people ask me about that. Oh, so you're not eating any food? And I was like, yeah, I'm eating food. This is, it's just a detox. I'm just trying to get the extra sugar, extra um, salt, extra processed food. I'm just trying to get all that sludge out of my system. But yes, I'm eating food. I'm not, you know, I'm not not eating food. So, 
you know, so if you want to do a detox, you know, to set your wellness goals. So if that's the one that you want to pick as one of your New Year's resolutions, make it very specific, even to the point of maybe picking a plan. So if you wanted to do the three-day detox that we did last week, that is already posted on ifyouhaveanegg.com. Um, you can go to youtube.com, search if you have an egg, and there's a video to, to tell, talk about it, to talk about what to do. Um, but make it really specific. Do you want to do it for one day? Do you want to do it for three days? So, you know, this year I will do a three-day detox to kickstart my wellness goals. Okay, that's very specific. Three days, okay? Then make sure it's truly doable. So one of the things, um, one of the issues that a few of you had with the three-day detox I did is you can't have grapefruit. So if you were taking statin medication or something else that conflicts, that has a conflict with grapefruit juice, then you can't do the same one that I did. So when you're running it through this STAR test, be specific, and then is it truly doable? So if you are taking a medication that conflicts with grapefruit, you can't do the same detox I did, so that's not truly doable. Does that make sense? It was truly doable for me. It was um, food that I had access to. Uh, there were no supply chain issues on, I'm serious, there have been weird supply, supply chain issues this last year, weird ones, not just toilet paper, okay? Um, <clears throat> but it was truly doable for me. I knew how to make everything. I had access to make everything. I had access to um, heat it up or reconstitute it or whatever I needed to do. So it was it was truly doable for me. You need to make sure it's truly doable for you if you choose something like this. And then action counts, okay? So you are going to do a detox. You are going to make this soup. You are going to drink this whatever. Okay, see, Vicki says they're having trouble finding potatoes in their area. I'm serious, people. Make sure before you plan something, make sure that you, you have access to these things, okay? So action counts, you are going, if you choose this one, you are going to do a detox rather than not doing something. So this is not a, you're not saying, I'm not gonna eat potato chips, you know, for the rest of my life. That's not, you know, that, that's not actionable. You, you, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do an action. It's something that's actionable. So you are going to do a detox or you are going to drink this specific thing or you are going to do something. You're going not, not do something. Does that make sense? Okay. And is it relevant? So if you were like me and you were feeling blah and bloated and sludgy, I don't know how else to describe it. So if that was relevant to you, if you felt icky and if you were in need, in need of some cleansing, then yes, it was relevant to you. If you ate like you normally eat throughout Christmas and the holidays and you feel fine, then it's not relevant. And there's no point in saying, I'm going to do a detox for the new year if you don't need to do a detox, okay? Just because it's not a TikTok challenge. God, I hope it's not a TikTok challenge. <clears throat> but just because I was doing it doesn't mean you have to do it, okay? So make sure that it's specific. How long are you gonna do it? What are you gonna do? Truly doable. Can you do it? Can you access everything you need to do that? Is it actionable? You're going to do something? And is it relevant to you? Do you, do you even need to do this, okay? So that's how you break that down in a star goal. The next one, and I'm actually doing pretty good on time. The next one, is this year I'm gonna add back points. I'm gonna I'm gonna add back so many points that I'm gonna have points left over every single day since we can add points back. Okay. Okay, that's not a real resolution and that's not a real goal. So to be more specific, you could say something like, you know, and this one's a little more detailed. So you might need to so when you're looking at this later, so if you if you're not listening to us live tonight, us I don't know why I always say us, it's me. Anyway, if you're not listening to me live tonight, um, and today's Sunday, January the 2nd. Um, oh yeah, Sylvia. And again, okay, so Sylvia tried the detox, but she felt but she felt sick. She didn't feel good. Then stop, okay? Then it is not truly doable for you and might not be relevant to you. So stop. You do not you do not have to do something just because somebody else is doing it, okay? And I'm serious, keep it to three days. Three days. Ask any of us who did it. Three days is plenty. By the end of the third day, you're going. I don't know, I just want some Triscuits or something. You know, when you start craving things like Triscuits, you're, you know, you just need to keep it to three days. Okay. Anyway, so this next one is a little more detailed. So if you're not listening to me live on Sunday night, January the 2nd, or if you're not watching this later on YouTube, or as soon as this is done, this will be posted on Facebook. And again, if you have not been with, with us before, and maybe that's why I'm saying us, because it's us, even though you can only hear me. Um, and you know, I just realized I haven't seen you all since last year. Uh -huh. Sorry, I meant to say at the beginning. I haven't seen a lot of y'all since last year. Anyway, um, so yeah. So if you haven't been with us, you might not know that the next day 
Um, after these chats, Jessica posts this on ifyouhaveanegg.com. My daughter, Casey, will post this. Um, she'll post both of these videos on YouTube. And I got a couple of chuckles out of that. Um, anyway, she'll post these videos on YouTube the next day so you can re-watch these or just listen to them. Like if you're working out or driving or whatever, please don't watch these while you're driving. But anyway, um, she'll post those the next day. And then her friend Jessica, who does all of our website design and all of our you know, other creative stuff, she'll post this in writing. So if you, you don't have to take notes, just in case you didn't know. Okay, but so when you go back to number two, if you're reading this, maybe read it out loud. If you're not listening to me, maybe go ahead and um, see, okay, and Elaine said it helped her to get rid of the excess flu that she gained from Christmas Eve. Me too. I'm sorry, I meant to say about the detox, worked great for three days. I was done by the end of day three. Like I was finished. I wanted it to be finished by the end of day three. Everything was delicious. Um, I, I mean, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it, but, um, oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. Vicki said, we are getting healthier thanks to Kelly, Casey, and Jessica. Thank you. And I'm sure the girls appreciate that too. Um, <clears throat> but on the detox, I am back to my pre-Christmas weight. Now, does that mean that I have lost 20 pounds and don't ever have to do WW again, whatever? No, not at all. This was a post-Christmas you know, holiday detox that I went ahead and did, you know, before we got to birthday, 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 anniversary, blah, 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 you know, whatever. So I'm back to my pre-Christmas weight, which is where I wanted to be because now you do you in 2022. So now I can start working on it from here. Okay. So anyway, this next one, this year, I am going to add back so many points, you know, that I'm going to have points left over every single day. So again, that's not specific. So if you're reading this later, maybe, maybe read that out loud to yourself to hear how non-specific that sounds. Okay. So instead be specific. You're going to add back how many points, what's your goal? You know, you need to write down or decide on a, um, you know, on a goal, on a number, on, you know, how many do you, how many points do you want to add back each day? And then how many times a week? So by specific, I mean, you need to say like, I want to add back in 2022. I, my goal in my, my new year's resolution or my goal is to add back. I'm going to make up number three points per day, but how many times a week? Um, so just saying that I'm going to add back points doesn't give you a goal. And if you only have control of your, um, of your meals, you know, three days a week or five days a week, then don't say I'm going to add back 20 points a day, which would be really hard. Um, but I at least have a good dinner, you know, 20 points a day, every day, you know, that, you know, that might be a lot. So my goal is to add back, you know, three to five points a day, um, on weekdays. So it doesn't make sense on weekends for me. So just be really specific how many points and how many days, you know, how many days a week. Um, is it truly doable? So don't set the goal so high that you can't achieve it. If you, again, if you can't control your meals, um, oh, yep, and Sherry's been there on her on her computer in Southwest Florida. Um, if um, if you if you only have control over a few of your meals, then don't say um, you know don't do something like um, you know. If you can't control your meals more than like two days a week or three days a week or whatever, or if there's two days that you can't control your meals, then say, you know, um, make it doable. You know, I can do this five days a week. I feel like I'm doing, you know, let, you know, name that tune. I can name that tune in five notes, you know. So I can do this five days a week. And for me, I can do this five days a week. Um, so it just doesn't make sense for me to set that goal too high, to set that bar too high and try to say seven, because then when I don't hit seven or I don't hit, you know, 20 points a day for seven days, when I don't hit it, then I just go forget it and walk off. But saying that I want to, and that's exactly right. Debbie says that many points would be eating all those veggies and running to the restroom. And then you would get points for running to the restroom all the time. Exactly. Um, but it just, it's not, it's not truly doable. Um, and then is it an action? So you will need to know that you did something. So you need to say, you know, like, um, I'm going to, my goal for this year is to earn back one point per day by drinking 60 ounces of water, five days a week, three days a week, two days a week, one day a week, whatever it is, but you're doing something. So you are drinking water or eating non-starchy vegetables or getting in your activity. You're not not doing something, you are doing something. So it is truly actionable in this goal. And then is it relevant? So if you're already adding back mega points because you, um, every day, then maybe not so much. So if you're one of my big veggie eaters and you're like, look, I'm already adding back 
you know, I eat so many vegetables and I'm already adding back three to five points a day in vegetables, I probably don't need to add any more. Or, you know, I exercise so much, I'm adding back a ton, you know, I might not need to. This is not gonna be for everybody. Remember, you need to make sure that the star goal fits you. So even if you go, S, fantastic, I'm being specific, two, or T, truly, T, truly doable, this is for me, wait, S, it's very specific. T, truly doable, this is for me. Action, I'm gonna do an action. R, relevant, oh no, it's really not relevant to me. Don't worry if three out of four, you know, hit hit all the marks and then one does not, you don't, you still don't have to do it. Pick something else or maybe change it or maybe, you know, maybe just change it to your goal is to eat more, not more, not just more, you know, one cup of non-starchy vegetables a day and don't make it about adding the points. So you need to make sure that it's rele relevant to you. But if you need a little extra help, so if you're thinking, you know, I gotta get, I gotta get going here. I need an extra, I need the extra points. I need to add back some points. You know, if you, if you're just, if you need some help with that, I've seen several of you that are not many, but there have been several of you that are kind of struggling, you know, with this, oh, I get less points now, you know, and you're trying to think of, you know, or you're, you're kind of micro focused on the less points instead of on the fact that you can do the things that you were normally doing before like drinking 60 ounces of water or eating your non-starchy vegetables and you can add those points back. So if you need a little a bit of help doing that, or if you just like to watch that number go back up, I will tell you there's nothing so satisfying for me than to be at a zero or less at the end of a day and eat a cup of non-starchy vegetables and then finish my last 20 ounces of water and go tick, tick and watch those two, even if I'm not gonna use them, watch those two points tick back on to not end the day at zero or in a deficit. I don't know, I gotta, you know, I gotta tell you, I kinda like it. Okay, so if that's the one for you, then you do you in 22. Okay, this last one, I'm harping heavy on this again this, this week. So this year I will reduce my food waste contribution by, okay? This is a lot more detailed and I hope I really got you thinking um, last week. So when we chatted last week, the rate of food that is being thrown away not used, not able to be used because of um, fuzzy, um, uh, what am I starting how to say, like fuzzy um, rules about how to use them and when they can be used and who can consume them, whatever. Um, it blew my mind. I mean, I stepped back and, and I stepped back from that last week and um, bye, Betty Ann, charge your battery. You're ready to charge your batteries before you go to bed, um, especially if you're under a winter weather advisory. Charge your phones before you leave. Um, get gas, feed your dog, do all the things. Okay, get some water, put it back in your car. Um, but anyway, last week I really stepped back and thought, you know, I, I feel like I'm a, a contributor to that. I mean, I feel like I contribute way too much um, to food waste. So, you know, if some of you all are feeling like that after I was last week, then you can fill in this blank several different ways. But here were some ideas, because um, this one's really very specific and it's very personal to you. Um, so here are some ways that you could um, see if one of these fits your wellness plans, if it fits your weight loss plans, and, and if it fits your food waste reduction goals, even if you didn't know that you had food waste reduction goals. So the first thing is, you know, again, be very specific. So. This one's gonna take some brain power to be specific. Some ideas that I had were maybe meal prepping. So, but meal prepping, not just meal prepping, because I can't tell you how many meals I've prepped and then chucked them in the garbage, okay? Um, and I would love to say that I put all of my food scraps in a food scrap area or that I'm, you know, composting everything, but I'm just not. So this one, meal prepping, yes, learn how to do better food preservation. Debbie, exactly, that's one of the things that we already talk about. So because I'm so bad, I have been, remember looking in the rearview mirror, I have been so bad at that. Bye Jeannie, have fun at yoga. Um, so meal prepping, but only for me, only things that can either go in the freezer, be pressure canned, um, or eaten quickly so that they're not thrown away. So y'all already know that I have these, I, I have these at home too, these meal prep haven. You can you can buy whatever kind of meal prep um, boxes or kits or whatever that you want to but I'm going to commit to my actionable thing is going to be that if I meal prep in these, that I'm only gonna meal prep completed meals and I'm gonna put them in the freezer so that everything has to be microwavable so that I can take it back out, microwave it and eat it. Um, all 
all, all, 100% of the soup that I make this year, I, I'm telling you, I get to where, so I make so much soup and I make such a big volume, I always end up throwing some of it away. So I am getting an extra thing of super cubes and super cubes and the meal prep haven thing, the super cubes are available on, um, if you have an egg.com under shopping, you can get them on their website. I think you can get them on Amazon, maybe. Um, but I am only freezing the soup. I'll take out what I'm gonna be able to eat quickly and then I'm gonna freeze the rest of it, put it in Ziploc bags so that I don't throw it away. That's so upsetting to me. Um, or another thing you could do, another thought I had was that I could, I could, you know, reduce my um, food waste contribution while reaching my wellness goals, while reaching my weight loss goals, um, to grow things, grow X, Y, and Z in our garden, so that so that I only eat what I grow and harvest. So that some of the food that I eat, and I need to decide what that amount's going to be because remember it has to be specific. Um, that I grow it, harvest it and eat it because I think I'm going to be less likely to throw things away if I had to work to plant them, pick them, harvest them, however, and prepare them. I think I'll be less likely to throw them away. Um, and another one is you could say, okay, here's one way. Here is one way that I am going to, um, that I'm going to reduce, I'm going to, you know, stay within my wellness and weight loss goals and I'm going to reduce the amount of food that I throw away is sharing a meal when I'm out with X. So pick a person, pick somebody who would definitely share a meal with you. That way you reduce the amount of leftovers because a lot of leftovers end up in the garbage can um, tonight too. Ooh, and Deanna bought, hold on, Deanna bought asparagus, onions, and garlic to plant. Mm, I'm getting excited. Um, but you know, but maybe you've got somebody that you could share a meal with and then that way, hey, you just cut the meal in half, you cut the bill in half, you just cut the calories and points in half, and you just cut the likelihood that it's gonna get thrown away in half. Okay, then, so that's the specific part of it. Then you have to make sure that it's truly doable. So if I choose growing things in our garden, um, I need to make sure that it's something that I actually can grow, okay? There are some things, not, you know, Nana didn't give me a green thumb for everything. So there are some things that I need to know. I need to make sure that it's things that I can harvest that season, you know, that it's not, like I don't need to go to our garden and plant like a pear tree, you know, because that would take forever. So you need to make sure that it's something that's truly doable. You need to make sure that it's actionable. So it's something that you are going to, well, that's a good idea. Debbie says extra veggies you could dehydrate and store for later. Yeah, but I'm telling you, Debbie, I want to get into the canning this year. So I need somebody to teach me, okay? Because my mom's not here. She knew everything about it and she did not, she fed me food out of the canner. I used to prep food for the canner, but she never told me how to do it. Never showed me how to do it. So I'm gonna need some help. But anyway, so remember, you need to make it actionable, make it something that you're going to do, not something that you're not gonna do. So don't say, I'm not ever gonna throw food away again. Okay, that's not an actionable goal. You know, you're not, you're not, not doing something. It's a lot easier to do something than to not do something. Okay, so make sure that it's actionable. And then last, and I'm nailing it all the time, and last, is it relevant? So if you took the food waste news to heart, then it is relevant to you. Um, if all of your meals are prepared and given to you, probably not, okay? So just make sure that it is relevant to you. But that was three quick New Year's resolution ideas. They don't have to be New Year's resolutions. They could just be goals for later. You could break them down into a smaller goal. We're gonna be talking a lot about star goals um, the rest of this month. Um, but I hope maybe, maybe one of those will, you know, stick maybe one of them will be you know will be yours um if not seriously let me know i mean if you think of something else and you put it to the star goal test so you think you know what this year i am going to mm -hmm, put it to the star goal test and tell me in the comments so you know i mean seriously comment below i hear people say that all the time comment below and let me know if you like blue or pink better well comment below and let me know what you you know what you decided to do and if you put it through the star goal test even if it didn't pass. So even if what you decided to do did not pass your star goal test and you decided, well, nope, I'm gonna change it or do something different. I wanna hear that too. Okay, so I'm gonna bust it out of here um, before the bad weather hits. Um, and again, who knows? We could have nothing or we could have 22 inches. I don't know, don't know what's coming. Um, but if you um, are watching this on YouTube, go ahead and let that next video roll over. Um, promise there's lots more good things to listen to. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click the subscribe button down here and click that little bell so that you'll know when new videos are posted. But I hope everyone has a, um, a safe week. 
you did it. You all survived um, the holidays. So you all are um, holiday survival members. You're members of our club. But y'all have a great week. Um, I'm going to go home and get, I think Alyssa and I tomorrow, she did such a good job making soup last week that I think tomorrow we are going to make our beef vegetable soup and we will definitely show y'all how to make it. So y'all have a great week. Be safe and I will see you next time. Good night.